Hi everybody, I'm Greg Fischel. Welcome to bonus weather video number three for this week. And we're gonna do something a little different today and take a look at what we call forecast soundings for the next several days. And what a forecast sounding is, is a forecast of how the temperature and the moisture and the wind will vary all the way from the surface on up into the upper atmosphere, 30, 40, 50,000 feet up, okay? And so by looking at those things, <clears throat> you can get a pretty good idea as to which days are gonna favor thunderstorms and which days are not. So let's take a look at the one for tomorrow first. Now, you know, it would, it would t it's way beyond the scope of this bonus weather video to get into all the details here, but I'll, I'll try to, to cover the most important stuff. If you look real carefully <clears throat> Can you see these little faint lines that are oriented like this? Maybe not, but if you can, <laughs> or just imagine that they're there oriented like that. that. Those lines are what we call dry adiabats. So if air rises and there's no addition of heat to the system, then it's going to move along that dry adiabat and it's going to cool at the rate of five and a half degrees per thousand feet. The Red line is the forecast temperature at all the levels of the atmosphere, all the way up here. The green line is the dew point. And when the temperature and the dew point come together or get very close, then you have a high relative humidity. If they're far apart, then the air is very, very dry. So tomorrow, <clears throat> the dew point temperature is rather low. And as a result of that, the air rises like this and it saturates at where this little thing says CCL, which stands for convective condensation level. And then the yellow line indicates what happens to that air parcel after the convection occurs. Well, the fact that this yellow line is so short here indicates that it's only going to be buoyant compared to the environment for a very short distance. And then if it keeps going up, it's gonna be colder than the environment and it's gonna sink right back down to where it was. So. This is why we think that tomorrow is going to be a dry day. Uh, we may have some fair weather cumulus clouds pop up in the afternoon, but that should be about it. Now, on Friday, things change. The amount of low level moisture, the dew point, goes up rather significantly. And so the convective condensation level actually comes down. And this yellow line indicates that once that occurs, once the convection initiates here, then the air is buoyant all the way up to beyond 250 millibars, which is like 35, 40,000 feet, okay? So definitely a better chance of seeing a thunderstorm later Friday and Friday night than what we're going to see tomorrow. Now on Saturday, this is sort of interesting because this is the day I think we're gonna see the most cloud cover. And this sounding actually would be after a few showers and thunderstorms go through because what happens is that once it rains, it cools the lower part of the atmosphere and it makes it more stable. Now there's still instability aloft up in here, but you see this blue line that this is showing what would happen to the air parcel at the ground and it is to the left of the environmental temperature. So this whole area is colder than the environment that it's in, so it can't rise, okay? So all this is saying is that we probably would already have experienced a shower or thunderstorm, if this is correct, by that time. And so the atmosphere has become a bit more stable. Then on Sunday, we're right back to where we were on Friday. And that is the air rises, convection initiates here, yellow line takes it all the way up past 250 millibars. On Monday afternoon, same thing, not quite as buoyant, but still there. And on July 4th afternoon, it's still there. So basically any day from Friday all the way through July 4th has the potential to have some afternoon and evening thunderstorms. And at this point, we think Saturday is the day that would feature the most cloud cover and the most coverage to the showers and storms. But remember, there's 14 and a half hours of daylight. And if it rains for one hour, you got 13 and a half hours where it ain't doing nothing, all right? So uh, sometimes when you see those seven day forecasts and you see all those icons with the raindrops and the lightning bolts and all that sort of stuff, pictorially, it makes it look like it's a lost cause and it's anything but, okay? Widespread day long rains are almost, almost, not entirely, but almost impossible 
In this part of the country this time of year, it tends to be much more along the lines of scattered showers and thunderstorms and very small scale occurrences. So again, there's, uh, even though you see those icons on the seven day, don't let it make you think that the whole day is gonna be shot because the vast majority of it will be just fine. It's just that we're gonna have these little interludes where we have a thunderstorm moving through and you know, in an hour it's gone and that's all there is to it. All right, so that is the bonus weather video for today. I hope that made at least a little sense. Uh, the daily weather update, of course, is already posted, and we will have another update for you, both the daily update and the bonus weather video coming up tomorrow. Hope you'll join us for both. Y'all take care, folks, and we'll talk to you soon.